think about that name for a second, think about that name backwards, what that spells. I do have to say I don't have the best track record with American classic. I will not be shocked because I know what's gonna happen at the end. I have to read this now. Hi friends, my name is Simka. Welcome back to a new video on my channel. Today I have a very exciting book haul for you because it is already the end of March, almost the end of March, but I haven't yet done a book haul this year, but I have been buying books. So I thought it would be fun to do a little accumulative book haul of all the books that I've gotten over the past three months already. Can't believe how 2024 is just flying by. It is already spring, crazy but super exciting. So yeah, let's just get into all of the books. I have a couple different categories of books. I've got classics, I've got newer releases, I've got thrifted books, I got new books, but let's start with the three books that I got because of university. I study literature in university as well, so we obviously read books, and these are the three books for this semester for my 19th century literature class. I'm so sorry if the reflection of the ring light in my glasses bothers you, by the way, but it's really cloudy and dark. Outside, like you would not be able to tell that it's spring right now so I need my ring light but I also have glasses like it doesn't work that well um, anyways let's get to the books the first book is the one that I'm currently reading it is Erewhon by Samuel Butler this book is about our narrator who discovers this new land called Erewhon Think about that name for a second, think about that name backwards, what that spells. It's a land in which all technology and machines are banned and where crime is a disease and disease is a crime. <laughs> Basically what I'm trying to say, what that means, is that if you commit a crime, you will not be sentenced for it, you will not go to prison, but you will get a doctor assigned because you're sick and you need a doctor to get better. Um, but when you're sick or something unfortunate happens to you, that is a crime. And that is something that you will get sentenced for. So these ideas are completely reversed. Um, and that's kind of what the story is about. It discovers Erwan and its strange ideas and differences from England, while also showing that it's not that different from England. It's just a ridiculed version. So in that sense, it's definitely a satire. I'm definitely enjoying it so far, even though I've come to a bit that's just a bit boring to read. But if you want my full thoughts on this book, just come back next week already or the week after for my March wrap-up because I will talk about this book more in depth there. The second book we're reading this semester is The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain, which I have in this beautiful Oxford edition. Um, I'm just gonna read you the back for this one because I haven't yet read it even though I think everyone knows this novel by now. It says, narrated by poor, illiterate wide boy living in America's deep south before the Civil War, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn is a story of Huck's escape from his brutal father and the relationship that grows between him and Jim, the slave who is fleeing from an even more brutal oppression. As they journey down the Mississippi, their adventures address some of the most profound human conundrums. The prejudices of class, age and color are pitted against the qualities of hope, courage and moral character. So that's this novel. I'm very excited and curious to read it because I've never read it. I've also never read anything else by Mark Twain, which I feel like is a bit of a gap in my... Um, reading journey. So I'm excited to read this. I do have to say I don't have the best track record with American classics. I don't know why, but they don't always hit like 19th century American classics. They don't always hit for me. Um, but I think discussing this in class will make it very interesting because I do find that when we discuss a book and I get to see things like hear opinions from other people that I wouldn't have thought of. I do always like a book a lot more um, and I do have high hopes. I do think I will like this one. And then last I have Hard Times by Charles Dickens which I've already read um, last month even I think so I'm pretty sure it's already mentioned in my last wrap-up. I had already read this book before so it's actually my second edition that I have of this book but because we're in university we always need a certain edition of a certain book so I couldn't use my other edition. Um, I'll read you the back for this one too. Mr. Thomas Gradgrind, headmaster of Coketown School and model of utilitarian virtue, feeds his pupils and family with nothing but facts and bans fancy and wonder from young minds. 
showing how his neglect of feelings leads to both personal misery and strife in wider society, in contrast with the happiness of the free-spirited circus girl Sissy Jupe. Dickens' novel is a celebration of the power of the imagination. It truly is, and I love that about it. I love Charles Dickens as an author. I really love his character representation. It's definitely very stereotypical, um, but he uses those stereotypes to prove a point, and I think he's just an author I really enjoy reading. I've never come across a Charles Dickens book that I didn't like, so I would absolutely recommend you to read this. Um, and that brings us to the last of the three books that I got for uni. Let's just go to the next category, which is kind of a lot together. The first two books are the books that I got in London. The first book being Mayflies by Andrew O'Hagan, which as you can tell, I read. I mentioned in a reading vlog, I mentioned it in my last wrap up. I absolutely adore this book. I still find myself thinking about it. It was so beautiful, had such beautiful meanings. Um, and it's also so special to me because I got this in London in Waterstones. I wish I had a Waterstones in Antwerp. The nearest one we have is in Brussels. The only one we have here is in Brussels, which I've never been to, but I've been to the Waterstones in London. Um, one of my favorite activities to do when I'm in London is just go to the Waterstones. And this one was bought there. I will read you the back. Everyone has a Tully Dawson, the friend who defines your life. In the summer of 1986, James and Tully ignited friendship based on music, films, and the rebel spirit. With school over, they rushed towards a magical weekend of youthful excess in Manchester, played out against the greatest soundtrack ever recorded, and there a vow is made, to go at life differently. Thirty years on, the phone rings. Tully has news. And this, this book is just... it's beautiful. If you take anything away from this video, it's that you have to read this book because it's absolutely gorgeous. The writing style, the characters, the emotions, everything is happening here. The next book I got in London is We by Sami Atin. This one I've mentioned quite a lot because one of you guys actually recommended it to me and I'm very excited to be finally reading this soon. I promise soon it's on my radar. Uh, it's one of the next books I will probably be reading. Oh, Lord. This was stuck in there. I don't know what happened. Um, I got it at Bookmarks, a bookstore in London near the British Museum. And this book is the blueprint dystopian novel that a lot of other dystopian novels are based on. The back describes it as follows. We takes place in a distant future, where humans are forced to submit to the requirements of the state under the rule of the all-powerful benefactor, and dreams are regarded as a sign of mental illness. In a city of straight lines, protected by a glass dome, a spaceship is being built in order to colonize new planets. Its chief engineer, a man called 503, keeps a journal of his life and activities. To his mathematical mind, everything seems to make sense and proceed as it should, until a chance encounter with a woman threatens to shatter the very foundations of the world he lives in. By reading the blurb, you can definitely see some of 1984 reflected in there. It's the other way around. This one came first and then 1984. But I'm very excited to read this because I'm also planning on reading 1984 itself and I want to read them probably first we and then 1984 so this is also a new book that I got not in London just in Belgium but look at this beautiful cover I think it's so stunning I don't know if you can really see it but it's beautiful basically my story with 1984 the reason I've never read this is because it was spoiled for me in high school multiple times um and I know how it ends, I know the ending, and I've always thought if I just put it off long enough and not read it, I'm gonna forget the ending and I can just read it and experience the shock factor of the plot twist at the end. <laughs> but I can't, I can't forget what happened in this book and I've decided to just get over it and read it despite the fact that I will not be shocked because I know what's gonna happen at the end. I'm so upset about that. Like, who would spoil a book? Like, 1984. Really upsetting. Um, you probably know what it's about, but I'm gonna read the back anyways because habit, you know. The Thought Police, Double Think, New Speak, Big Brother. 1984 itself. These terms and concepts are central to our thinking about freedom and its suppression. 
yet they were newly created by George Orwell in 1949 as he conjured his dystopian vision of a totalitarian world. The principal characters are ordinary human beings like ourselves, Winston Smith and Julia, whose love is also an act of rebellion against the party. Opposing them are the massed powers of the state. No one is free from surveillance, the throat is constantly altered and Big Brother controls all. Even the simple act of keeping a diary is punishable by death. In Winston's battle to keep his freedom of thought, his powerful adversary O'Brien uses fear and pain to enter his very thought processes. Does 2 plus 2 equal 4? Or is it 5? We find out in Room 101. 1984 was Orwell's last novel, but the world he created is always with us, as we find within it a mirror for our own times and warning for the future. I'm so stoked to be reading this. I'm so excited. I need to know what's up. I do have really high expectations, but I feel like it can't disappoint, because it's 1984 and I've never heard a bad word spoken about this novel ever, and I'm just really excited. I'm really want to read more dystopian novels because I feel like it tells us so much about the society we live in right now and I think dystopian literature is just kind of slowly becoming one of my favorite genres even though I haven't actually read a lot of dystopian novels um, but we're making a change in that we are reading the dystopian novels 1984 is on the list and to match the beautiful cover of 1984 I have Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde look at these covers Oh, that makes me so happy. A good matching book makes me so happy. Um, this is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, also a book we're going to be reading for uni, but it is included in our Northern Anthology, but I still wanted to buy... I still wanted to buy a copy for myself because it's so pretty. This also has other stories by R.L. Stevenson because it's very... I mean, it's, it is already a very thin book, but Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is like this much of the book. <laughs> so not at all a lot, but I'm very excited to read this. I'm going to read you the back here as well to give you an idea. In this powerful deconstruction of Calvinist belief and the hypocrisy at the heart of Victorian society, Stevenson creates a gothic icon in the divided self that is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Born from a nightmare and anticipating Freud's theory of the unconsciousness, Stevenson literalizes the concepts of the supernatural doppelganger and the split personality in a timeless tale of guilt, desire, and violence by which all subsequent double stories must be judged. In seeking to cleanse his soul of sin, Dr. Henry Jekyll instead unleashes a monster. First published in 1886, this tragic study of the duality of man established Steven <laughs> established Stevenson's international reputation as an author. This sounds so exciting. Um, I don't know if you can really call it a dystopian, it's more sci-fi, I guess, Frankenstein-like, obviously, and I'm very excited because Frankenstein is also one of my favorite novels, and this just gives that vibe, and it also has other short stories, um, so I'm very... I'm just overall very excited about these purchases. And next, <laughs> there's more. I have some thrifted books. First book that I got is Desperate Remedies by Thomas Hardy. Doesn't this look stunning? I love Thomas Hardy so much. He's one of my favorite authors. His descriptions of nature are spot on. His characters, his like conflict between romanticism and realism. I absolutely adore that. And I found this book in the thrift store and I thought, yes, I need it. This was only four euros, so I couldn't, I couldn't leave without it, basically. Um, I'll read you the back just for some context of what this is about. It says, after the sudden death of their father, pretty graceful Cytheria, Cytheria, I don't know, Gray, and her brother Owen are forced to find employment. She is a lady's maid to the redoubtable Miss Ald Aldcliffe? Why, Thomas Hardy, why did you choose such difficult names for this one? And he as a clerk in an architect's office. They move to Budmouth, where Cytheria meets Edward Springrove, a talented young architect. Although in love, he is not able to declare himself and leaves for London. Cytheria is now being courted by Mr. Manston, the exceptionally handsome yet slightly sinister steward to her employer, with whom he has a secret understanding. 
Will her brother, or even her beloved Edward, be able to extricate herself, her from her predicament? A strength of feeling degenerates into violence, and murder is committed. Cytheria's dreams of love and happiness seem ever more remote. I have to read this now. I don't know why, I, I don't even think I read the back. I think I saw Thomas Hardy, and I thought I need to have this, and I, I didn't even read what it's about. And this sound... This sounds good. This sounds like something I would like. This sounds like something I'm in the mood for right now. It made me very happy. Pleasant surprise that I bought a book that I actually want to read. Um, yeah, but that's Thomas Hardy. Very excited about this. This just made me even more excited about this. But then I have a little trinity of Roald Dahl books because, yeah, I saw them in the thrift store and I needed to have them. First of all, we have The Giraffe and the Pelly and Me, which I've already read. This is such a cute little book. A bucket, a ladder, and a cleaner. How about a pelican, a giraffe, and a monkey? Not the usual ingredients, but this is a window cleaning company with a difference. Join Billy as he makes friends with three amazing animals and gets up to some thrilling adventures. And thrilling it is. This was so cute. I mean, Roald Dahl, he's just one of the most incredible children's authors that ever existed. And I stand by that and I think this is great. I had honestly never read Roald Dahl in English. We had his books in Dutch when we were younger. So I read Matilda and The Big Friendly Giant and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and more. Um, but I never read them in English because obviously I grew up in, in Belgium. I grew up speaking Dutch, so I read children's books in Dutch and not in English, so it's fun to now be reading them in their original language. Definitely Matilda, which I've also already read. Even though everyone knows what this book is about, because if you don't, how can you have lived your life thus far and not known what Matilda is about? But just for the, like, just in case, just in case, I'm gonna read you the back. Matilda is an extraordinary girl. She is sensitive and brilliant. Even before she is five years old, she has read Dickens and Hemingway, Kipling and Steinbeck. Steinbeck. I said that's so weird. <laughs> Matilda's gormless parents are neither sensitive nor brilliant. They think Matilda is just a nuisance and treat her as a scab. A scab to be endured until the time comes to flick her away. As if this isn't enough, Matilda has to cope with the odious headmistress, Miss Trunchbull, who terrorizes the whole school, including Matilda's beloved class teacher, Miss Honey. When Matilda is attacked by Miss Trunchbull one day, she suddenly discovers she has an extraordinary power and realizes she can make trouble for the monstrous grown-ups in her life. I love it. And the drawings, great. Love it. Absolutely love it. And then I also have The Witches, which I've never read, so I'm excited to be reading this. The back says, A real witch is easily the most dangerous of all the living creatures on Earth. That's a pretty horrifying thought. More horrifying still is that real witches don't even look like witches. They don't ride around on broomsticks, they don't even wear black cloaks and hats. They are vile, despicable, scheming harridans who disguise themselves as nice, ordinary ladies. So how can you tell when you're face to face with one? Read this story and you'll find out all you need to know. You'll also meet a real hero, a wise old grandmother and the most gruesome, grotesque gang of witches imaginable. Sounds cool. Now I want to read this immediately after I finish this video. So those were the three little Roald Dahl books that I've got and those were actually all of the thrifted books already. Not a lot of thrifted books on this haul, which is weird because usually most of my books are secondhand, but that's fine. This actually already brings us to the last little pile of books that I have, which are the books that I've actually recently done a reading vlog for, like literally last week. So I'm just gonna go over them very quick because I talk about them in depth in that video. So if you are curious about these books, just watch last week's video, honestly. Um, the Irish books, that's what I'm talking about. So first of all, Foster by Claire Keegan, an absolute new favorite. I'm also not gonna read the backs to you because I don't want to. I talked about them like literally last week, so I feel like it doesn't make sense to just repeat myself over and over and over again. So Claire Keegan's Foster, loved it. Trespasses by Louise Kennedy, also highly enjoyed. And then Normal People by Sally Rooney, 
those were the books <laughs> those were all of the books that i got so far this year those are 14 books i feel like that's a lot but i also feel like that's quite okay for three months 14 books in three months like that could be worse and three of them four technically were for uni so basically 10 books that i got you know because the other four are validated <laughs> Anyways, this was my book haul. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you've bought any good books recently and what book you're reading right now or if you've read any of these books that I just showed you and you just want to say something about it, just talk about books in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay reading and I'll see you next time. Bye!